while the pandemic intensified the crisis, exacerbated. The understandable collapse of our economy happened because of the pandemic. But the real concern is that there was a slowdown in the Indian economy in the kind of decade before the pandemic. So what caused the slowdown in the Indian economy? Uh, you know, what caused the slowdown before the pandemic? What is causing it? I'm not 100% sure. But there are writings, political economists, political scientists writing, sociologists writing, simple things in life like trust matters a lot. Uh, everyday life, everything is not written down as a contract. Thousand things we are doing by trust. Once trust begins to erode in society, society gets polarized, not trusting one another, the economic indicators begin to do badly. Francis Fukuyama is the classic work, which points to East Asians East Asia's success because not just economic variables, but East Asia is picking up trust of the kind that you get in Nordic and Scandinavian countries. This is there in East Asia. India, starting from I don't know when, the trust was probably improving. So Koshik, are you saying that trust and non-economic issues like that, social issues, do have a direct impact on growth rates and poverty levels? India has invested a lot, some will say too prematurely, in building a country where you feel a common identity just, just by virtue of being in the country. That was the common identity. That is getting eroded. And I cannot be completely sure about this, but I'm completely sure that the growth has crashed in a way that no one had expected. There has to be causes for that. And my feeling is the politics has become so divisive and here I'm not putting blame. Uh, immediately nowadays in public debates, you think that the blame is at this person's door or that person's door. I'm not doing that. But we have to recognize that it has, it has become a very divisive politics. And that is probably what is adding to the mismanagement of the economy. There are a couple of things which were pure, simple mistakes and mismanagements. For instance, the demonetization was a very bad economic move. The lockdown, the way it was done, which left somewhere between 15 to 40 million people, actually from 23 million to 40 million people, I know the data, scattered over the country, doing exactly the opposite of a lockdown because they had to find food and survival. Those mismanagements did contribute, but you can correct them. Mistakes happen, you can begin to correct them. The political divisiveness, when trust goes down in society, much harder to correct. I feel we should bring that on the agenda. And we have to reach out to people that it's in your collective interest to stand together. Too little of that happening right now. And I just wanted to ask you one more thing. The world is changing. You're in America at the moment. You understand firsthand what's happening. There's been this huge change in America with Biden coming in and this talk about, we just said, the coalition of democracies, by which some imply that China is on one side and democracy is on the other. And that is actually really important for India, right? Uh, as you just said, India was proud of being a democratic country where you could say anything, you could argue, and freedom matters in India. Do you feel that's changing? <clears throat> and in the new kind of post-Trump world where being a true democracy could carry a premium now, a benefit in the Biden, more democratic world. So in the democratic world, is there going to be a kind of face-off, a division with demo democracies and the non-democratic world? And should India be aware of this? And should we be happy about it? And will that affect us in any way? Very much so, because on this, uh, we truly took pride in India. You know, India, the time when India became independent, around that one or two decades, whole host of countries became independent at that time. Colonialism was breaking off. But if you see, there's only one country with a record that became independent then and remained a democracy with complete free speech is India. There's been hardly any interruption. There was an interruption during the emergency, to, uh, uh, 1775, 1975 to 1977, a two-year interruption. But Basically, India has been a vibrant democracy. You stand up and criticize. And I know that even at G20 meetings, when I used to go, people would say that it is an amazing, uh, uh, in our sort of corridor discussions, people would show a lot of respect to India. 
that you can speak. India is like a rich, developed country in terms of that space. And we were also beginning to grow. So the India's investment in that freedom of space for debate and discussion, the democracy which was vibrant, which makes growth difficult, but it puts growth on a stronger footing. And India had begun to grow. So it was an amazing journey for the country. And maybe at times I feel we took too much pride in that, that that is beginning to, India is eroding on that.